remember there are people out there in the world who are still being persecuted purely based on their race. Hey guys, it's The Wonders. I'm Ben. I'm Charisse. Yeah, today we'll just like to briefly talk about what's going on in the world and well, our experience the last mm -hmm. couple weeks. Um, by now, we've all by now everyone would have seen the news, what's happening. Um, <laughs> of a racial injustice and unequal, well, unequal justice that's going on. And then, you know, just that basic human right to, well, just be treated as a human. Uh, yesterday we sat and we watched 13th on Netflix. We would definitely recommend that to anyone. <laughs> Who would like to have a better understanding of systemic racism? Hmm. It goes. Yeah. It's a beautiful documentary. Very well put together. It does have some images in there which are hard to watch yeah, and true. see, but they're important images for the world to see. Yeah, and then just you know, like we sit and watch it, and we will say it's hard to watch these things, or we can't believe these things actually happen, but. For the people who have to live that reality every day, like it's not even a fraction of what they had to, <laughs> what they have to go through. Mm. You know, like, like we can't sit and say, "Oh, well, that doesn't happen where we are," because this happens everywhere around the globe. In every single country, if you think of it, has been some form of racism. Maybe classism, colorism, sexism. Like everywhere. Every like these things happen everywhere, and I, I wouldn't sit here and say that growing up in the Caribbean or being from the Caribbean that I didn't know racism was real because it it was real. It it wasn't my reality every day, but <clears throat> like certain things, like would happen or I would be exposed to world news so I would see these things happening so I can't say it's not something that I didn't know about <laughs> because it's something we all know about but I would say we didn't know the magnitude of it until everything started coming up recently that like we already knew it was a big problem but we didn't know just how big it was and uh, being in an interracial relationship we always knew that we would be raising ch children soon and we would have to educate them on these things but we didn't know just how much education we would need to do and um, this year these past few weeks have really opened up our eyes to that it has been hard to watch and experience but it, was, it has been necessary the small changes that we're starting to see we hope that it continues happening and we hope that countries around the world start taking note of it and then looking at themselves and going, well, what can we do to improve our systems and then putting those into place. To yeah. end the systematic injustices inside society. Oh yeah, definitely. Because it happens, it happens way too often. Sometimes you might have racial biases and not even know that you have those racial biases. Mm. And it's not wrong to have biases as long as you accept what they are and account for them in your actions. You might look at someone and you've been raised to fear them, but as long as you know that you're fearing them because that's how you raise them and you choose to not accept that fear into your life, mm -hmm. you go against what you were taught. Yeah. It is hard. Mm -hmm. It's hard to do, but it is what is right to do. Mm -hmm with the invite of social media, like we've seen over the years all of these things happening with the Eric Garners and 
Philando Castells and Sandra Blands and you know the list can go on like everyone would say these things have been going on and it's nothing new but what's happening is that it's being recorded and put in on the internet for the whole world to see but these are things that have been happening for generations and like I would say to people to look inwardly and try to address like these things like don't just say to yourself well I'm not racist that doesn't apply to me because it does you know you may not be able to make it to a protest but like you said you could sign these petitions you could share this content you could share these petitions with other people share them with your family your friends um, like all these things are important as well if you if, can't make you it can. share the information of the protest someone you might know might be able to go to it yeah. and they might not have heard of that protest yet share it make people aware that's the greatest tool we have in this age is the ability for us to share and make people aware of things yep. it is a tool we must make use of those who are opposed to us, those who seek the inequality, are using those tools. We yeah. have to use them as well. Yeah, agreed. And um, like, uh, like we've seen recently to um, people, especially people in interracial relationships, um, like not feeling like they should comment on the issue, but. I feel like you should comment on the mm. issues because you are in an interracial relationship. Like you said before, people might have these biases and then they're saying, oh, well, we're not racist. Yeah, you're not racist, but you have to be actively anti-racist. And that starts with you. Mm. And it being inter in the interracial relationship, like that gives you, like that gives you like, an opportunity, in. yeah, and an, an opportunity to actually address it head on hmm. and have those conversations with your partner, and like you yourself can then educate your family, your friends, call them out on these things and let them know because, because, yeah, sometimes people do say things and they don't realize what they said, but you calling them out on you calling them out on them can let them like think back and look inwardly and be like, oh, well, that's wrong, I shouldn't be saying those things. You know, mm -hmm. I don't think the Black Lives Matter movement has affected our relationship in any way because we've been having these conversations for years um, because we started off long distance um, seven years ago. Most of the time, um, six and a half years of our relationship was long distance. Mm. We had nothing to do but talk. Yep. So we talked about these things. So this is not nothing new for us. Like it's something we've been discussing for years now. Mm. Um, we would like people to see us as just a normal couple, but we know people are not going to see us as just a normal couple, as just a normal couple because obviously we have obvious differences, but the skin deep. Yeah, and we're together in spite of those differences. So I don't think the Black Lives Matter movement has affected our relationship in any way because, as we say, all lives don't matter until Black Lives Matter. And when Black Lives do matter, then the lives of minorities in general start to matter, then we can all say probably and be happy that all lives matter. Mm. And once that is, once you have it in your country where people are treated equally, don't forget those in other countries. Mm. Remember, there are people out there in the world who are still being persecuted purely based on their race mm. being there's I don't like the word but there are genocides going on in the world yeah I mean like everywhere like we will say everywhere racism is real and um, there are some governments who like to say oh it's not it's not real here and that's America's problem but it's not just America's problem it's a global problem Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. So it's not think this is not something you can just overlook and say, well, this doesn't happen where I am. It, like you travel, 
so you can't say this doesn't happen where I am or it doesn't affect me when travel and three and when things like travel and trade is a real thing <laughs> like uh, the, when you trade and interact with other countries you're not just trading things you're trading ideas and ideologies mm -hmm. and you're support supporting their economy and their systems of oppression mm -hmm. so you can't just say it's not your problem because it's an everyone problem and what I would say the heart of the Black Lives Matter movement is it's not that only Black Lives Matter or only the lives of indigenous people or people of color matter it's a humans against racism movement mm -hmm. that's what it is it is a movement to make all lives matter yeah. we do wish that more people would have these conversations but we're not going to make an assumption that they aren't having it because they could be having yeah. these conversations behind closed doors mm -hmm. but we just wish that more people would come out and talk about it openly, yeah. especially interracial couples. Hmm. You have an end to both sides yeah. that you can use to further conversation. Yeah. Use to humanize people. Mm -hmm. It's horrible that <laughs> we have to humanize people. Especially, in, you, you should be having these conversations, especially because you're going to be raising mixed children and biracial children. and. They should be aware of these things and not grow up hating one side of themselves. You may not end all in all injustice this year or in the next five years, but you can help to make it better for your children and for the future generations to come, and for yourself even, because mm -hmm. you still have you still have to live in these times. It's like the greatest evil is to not speak out against injustice. Mm. It's something like that. I can't remember it. But basically the gist of it is, the greatest evil is to not speak out against injustice. But yeah. through inaction you are compliant. Yeah. And we're not, we're not like trying to come for anybody or anything, that's just... Just, that's just how it is. Yeah, that's just how it is. Like, if you can't go for protests, just like sign petitions, vote at your elections, share these petitions, share all the information you have. <laughs> just bring awareness to the issues. Mm -hmm. And be a smart voter. Yeah. That means you don't vote for who tells you to vote for. You go out, you research who you're voting for. Mm -hmm. Know why you're voting for them. Um, great video breakdown on how voting systems work and why we end up in situations where we end up with two parties. Check out CGP Grey's videos on voting systems. They're an amazing resource on learning how voting works and why you end up systems with two parties. Mm. Um, thank you all for watching this video. Leave some resources down in the comments if you can yeah. for people to learn mm. more. Yeah, like our platform is small but we would still like to use it for something positive. And remember, you might be one voice but one voice can change the world. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye. <coughs> Ow. <laughs>